Hello, this is Scott Manley. In our previous videos, we developed an interplanetary atmospheric capable lander, and we are now taking it on an interplanetary voyage, launching it from the planet of Kerbin through deep space and landing it on the planet of Kerbin because we're still flying with version 0.16 and we haven't got planets yet. So we've had a number of problems. We've had asymmetric fuel loads, which caused the vehicle to shift around and become uncontrollable. And just before we arrived, our autopilot was gone. I mean, literally, it disappeared off the side of our ship. We have no idea where it went. So I'm going to have to fly this manually. First thing I'm going to have to do is bring my periaps down to inside the atmosphere so we can aerobrake. Now, we want to bring it down to about uh, 30, 20, 30 kilometers. We want to bring it down not so low that we are forced to land, but low enough that we can guarantee we will be captured. We don't want to force ourselves to land because we do have spare fuel. And when we are landing, we want to make sure that we come down somewhere we can, in fact, land. We want to be on terra firma rather than in the ocean. So, yeah, you see, we're bringing the periaps down using just a slow thrust. Uh, seems to be relatively stable, even with the asymmetric fuel load. There we go, 500 kilometers. Bringing it down slowly, as you can see, as we bring it down, the exit vector curves around as we get closer to the center of, of, the, of gravitation here. Okay, and that's us inside the atmosphere. Now just fine-tune it to get low enough that we're going to be capped. Okay, 24 is probably good. We can adjust this at the last minute, but, you know, it's very likely that number will change once we time accelerate inwards. Since we're time accelerating inwards, I kind of want to have this pointing in a velocity vector that will help me change, well, will, will basically help me abort the, the aero braking if I'm going to go in too deep. So... I'm going to be aiming this vehicle along its velocity vector so I can power on through the atmosphere should I find that I do not want to land. So let's time accelerate down. Times 1,000 acceleration. Well, that's 10,000 will probably do it. For 3, 2,000, 20,000, 10,000. Oh, okay, 150 plus kilometers. Let us take stock of our approach vector. Ooh, that looks like a lot of land. Maybe we'll just land this right away. Let's see. I'll zoom in. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good continent. So I want to kill my velocity. I mean, if we didn't want to kill the velocity, if we didn't want to land here, what we would do is power on through, put it into an elliptical orbit, and uh, once we reached apoapse, we could bring the periaps up and we'd be in a stable orbit which would then let us pick when we want to actually land on the planet. So yeah, what I'm going to try and do is kill some velocity here and but even at these low thrusts it seems that uh, I'm having some issue holding this thing straight. It just doesn't want to cooperate. Um, I mean yeah, it's a good thing that we are, perhaps it is a good thing we're on a landing vector. If we were not, we might be committed at this point. Committed to land uh, wherever the laws of physics put us. Because, you know, once we get deep inside the atmosphere, we do not have, it takes a lot of fuel to change the landing site. And we do not, you know, we don't have a place to spare it. Uh, these fuel tanks really, I think, are causing a lot of trouble with their loads. So what I'm going to... Okay, well, I don't want to fire here. I want to wait for the thing to rotate around, and then I'm going to give it another burn. See if I can kill. I'm going to push my periaps down, deeper inside the atmosphere. Yeah, you see I pick up spin there. Uh, I really need to ditch these tanks sooner rather than later. Uh, just question of when. Let's go down to 30 kilometers up, and we're traveling at 3 kilometers per second. Really... It is going to be a case. I really need to ditch these. And just the question, I want to try and reduce the spin as much as possible. Worst case scenario, um, yeah, you see we're coming down. The worst case scenario is going to say is that we uh, skip through the atmosphere and then come down in the ocean again. Uh, it looks like we're going to be okay. I just need to try and aim these in the right direction. Try to rest the spin as much as possible. Oh, shoot. 
Uh, I've just lost a landing leg. Okay. We're 20 kilometers up. We are descending through the atmosphere. We have lost one of our landing legs. We have no autopilot. At least we have fuel, full fuel tanks and we have uh, a plan. We're coming down over land. So I'm going to re, I'm going to change the staging because I need to ditch these three legs. If we landed on these three legs, it wouldn't help us. Uh, we'd just fall over. Um, so they're extra mass and extra mass can be ditched. So that's us doing fine. 13 kilometers, we are now heading down and we have at least got ourselves into a relatively controllable descent pattern. I want to get this as vertical as possible. The parachutes are going to do that for me, of course. Where we have eight parachutes on this and through the testing, they have not torn the vehicle apart anymore. And I think that's partly because... Well, I don't know why it is. I think just partly because we've done a lot of testing. <laughs> no, I mean, we, we've basically... The, the two halves of the vehicle are roughly equal in mass now. So the load should be equal and the decoupler shouldn't be subjected to huge adverse stresses. So we're down to about four kilometers, 160-something meters per second. We don't want to fire the engines. We want to wait to see how slowly we end up moving after the parachutes open. It'll probably be below 20 meters per second, which means, you know, relatively small amount of fuel will be needed to kill the velocity for a soft touchdown. But I think the touchdown might have to be even softer than I was anticipating. And again, without an autopilot, this is going to be quite, you know, complicated. Um, I'm going to do a little engine test before I, I land, just so I know how much I need to thrust. Uh, so yeah, so about, you know, two thirds thrust should get me decelerating and I just want to save that until we get right above the surface of course it is nighttime and there is no shadow so again that's going to be a complete guesstimate no uh, radar here a good thing is that once I get really close to the surface I will see the engines touching the surface and I will be able to adjust things there we go full thrust and kill Whoa, there we go, kind of wobbling like a jelly, but uh, nothing appears to have broken. That's us. Let us get our pilot out. We'll go for a walk on this brave new world. This is probably the longest journey back to Kerb in, in uh, history. Actually, that's not true because I did it longer in my previous one of my previous missions. But this is the longest one I've ever done in 0.16. Oh, there we go. What a wonderful way to announce my arrival on a new planet. Yep, let's get out, climb down. You see, this works. This totally works. How's that for science? We'll be able to get out and uh, do some stuff on the surface, wander around. You know, and this is, this is assuming the planet is big and heavy like a uh, Kerbin. Kerbin's probably the worst case. Actually, Worst case for landing on right now may be the planet Eve because it says it has a thick atmosphere and it's not clear how thick that might be. If a planet has a really, really thick atmosphere, we might be better going with space planes because you'll be able to get much more lift from those wings lower down. However, space planes, it's the, 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 the turbojets may not actually work on EVE because the atmospheric composition is different. Okay, let us go into space again. Let us show that we can relaunch this sucker. So, uh, yeah, it's the, the acceleration initially is relatively slow, but um, we do have, you know, maybe 1.2, 1.3 Gs acceleration, just enough to get us off the surface. And, of course, that fuel is going to burn off very quickly. And we just need to get this top component high enough that uh, it can escape most of the atmosphere and get itself into orbit. We want to get into orbit with as much fuel as possible because we are going to have to perform a rendezvous with another ship. And of course, both ships will have engines, but we'd prefer to burn the fuel in this one first before we burn fuel in the other vehicle, which would be uh, needed for perhaps for further missions. So that's us getting up to four kilometers. Maybe we can get this up to about, you know, half a kilometer per second before we have to dump this tank. We'll find out. Uh, yeah, it's starting to pick up some real speed, but we're really being constrained by the atmosphere. Yeah, vertical ascent on uh, EVE might be a big issue. 
we will find out, of course, when I drop atmosphere probes in and see just what happens. I, I'm wondering if they're going to change the atmosphere gauge to show uh, you know, how they're going to show higher pressures and, and atmospheric composition. Maybe it'll change colour when you uh, are running in an atmosphere that won't let you run turbojets. Who knows? So yeah, up above 10 kilometers. Now we could probably get into orbit from here, but you know, we want to get as much use out of that extra fuel as possible. 300 meters per second. I wonder if we can reach 400. Yeah, we'll probably reach 400. Can we reach 500 meters per second now? Uh, starting to turn over in my gravity turn. 400 meters per second. 450, 460, there we go. 470 meters per second before we ditched that tank. And oh. What the hell? That's not good. Uh, I must have jammed some control there. <laughs> we just need to get control of this thing. At least we are still going upwards. We want to continue. Yeah, look, I think this is a success. This thing has a fuel tank of gas. It's totally going to go into an orbit. It's going to have fuel left. And next time we shall try to rendezvous with the mothership and return home. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.